Good evening, everyone. We'll call the um, regular governing board meeting uh, on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022 to order at 7.01 p.m. Um, let the roll call reflect that all board members are in attendance. If you'd please join me um, by standing for the Pledge of Allegiance as you're able and then stay um, for the moment of silence. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Do we have um, a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. A second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> we um, will have a call to the public. Mrs. Ordway will um, call names and then we'll... I have Paul Carver and Patrick Michaels. Uh, the board invites public comment on the district's business in general and on any agenda item in specific. All speakers must observe the rules of decorum. Speakers must fill out a card listing name, address, and topic and hand it to the board secretary prior to the president calling the meeting to order. Speakers must make their comments in no more than three minutes if necessary to accommodate all speakers within the 30-minute overall limit. The board president may shorten each speaker's time. Tonight we have two, so everybody gets their three minutes. Constructive criticism is in order, rudeness, vulgarity, disruptive conduct, or remarks disrespecting personal dignity are not in order and will not be allowed. Under the Arizona Open Meeting Law, the Governing Board cannot discuss or act on any items that are not listed on the agenda. Board members may respond to criticism made by a speaker, ask staff to review a matter, or ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. Agenda. Okay, please step to the... Um Microphone, state your name for the um, record, and then your time will begin. My name is Paul Carver. Good evening, members of the board. Just wanted to visit for a few seconds on the topic that covered so many board meetings over the last couple of months, uh, the uh, SBG that we discussed. Uh, I know that we voted on it, or you voted on it, rather, and, and passed it. Uh, there seems to be a misconception that the community is, is all puppy dogs and rainbows when it comes to that decision, among other things. And... I just need you to know that that's not the case. There's teachers by the dozens that are frustrated with having to try to add this on top of everything else that they're having to do in order to try to help educate our children. There are parents that are frustrated because they have children that are now having to shift gears. And I know that the crux of the vote last time boiled down to we wanted this to be A through F. We wanted it to be percentages. And I saw the work that was done on the district website and the work that was done was amazing, and the committee did amazing work with their preparations and the information that they proposed, but the community has said as politely as they can and sometimes as loudly as they possibly can that they're not interested in this change at this time. And now we've gone from seven schools participating in SBG to 16 schools participating in SBG, and all we've done is put a different coat of paint, paint on it. Um, there wasn't a single board member that was happy with going towards the SBG program. Nobody that has spoke at the last handful of meetings regarding this is happy with the SBG program. Most of those have been teachers, and I would think that their opinion would count almost more than anything else. Uh, it's just really frustrating to me that we don't seem to be listening, and my understanding of the functioning of the school board is to listen to the community, take their concerns to heart, and then get with the administration and make sure that we execute those concerns. And, and, and you know, if it's a program that has to be, then we're not doing a very good job of explaining it to the community as to why it needs to happen. The teachers have brought up good points. I felt like I brought up a couple good points over the last couple of meetings, and th those are just being brushed aside. Um, again, as I mentioned before, it seems like SBG just allows us for a lower failure rate, not because we're educating the children better, but because we're changing the brackets. And now we've got the teachers, again, 
God bless them for all that they do. 35, 36 children in some cases, special needs kids in the same classroom without AIDS and without CPI training. And now they're having to change the entire model of how they grade children to add on top of that. And coming out of COVID, I just think now is the wrong time. We haven't even mastered it in the seven class, in the seven schools rather, that it's been in for the last handful of years. And now we're gonna expand it into nine more. So thank you for your time. I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you for your comments. Our next, is there another speaker? Yes. Our next speaker. Two, just two, Sheila? Just two. Thank you. Just want to make sure. Please state your name for the record, sir, and then your time will begin. Patrick Michaels, and I'm calling in regards to uh, Inspiration Mountain, the new school. And uh, I live on the east side of Stetson Valley Parkway. And uh, it's, there's no busing for the kids on the east side of that. And the crossing there, there is no crossing for the kids to be able to cross and get to the school. And it's real hazardous on Stetson Valley Parkway. I don't know if anybody knows that road. It's two uh, independent lanes, two lanes going north and two lanes going south. And to be able to cross that, it's almost impossible. And especially after hours when the kids are getting out of school and high, high school kids are getting out of high school, they drive up and down that road really fast. And it's a real hazard for uh, the kids crossing there. And uh, I think something needs to be done about it or needs to be looked at real close. I mean, it's a real hazard, and I don't think it's uh, safe for any of the kids to be crossing there, even with parents. If, uh, on, the, on that intersection there uh, from Deem Hills on that Stetson Valley Parkway, there's wrecks there all the time. I mean, it's just crazy. So I wanted to bring that up to the school board and see if there's something that can be done for the kids to be able to cross safely in that area. Thank you, sir, for bringing that to our attention. Dr. Finch, could you please um, provide an update in Friday's um, update to the board regarding that crossing section? Um, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you um, to our public speakers. Do I have a motion for I would ask, consent yes. agenda? I would ask that the governing board approve consent agenda items 3A through 3K. I second. Uh, Sorry, just one second. Are we, did something happen to L, M, and N? On consent agenda? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is going to M, right? It, it does on the, the, my paper sheet. So I yeah, just, my, my sheet that I'm looking at just says K. So no I problem. would uh, restate that as the governing board to approve consent agenda items 3A through 3M. 3N as in Nancy. N as in Nancy. I second. Okay, we have Thank a motion you. and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. To excess hue size vote, nay. Okay, motion passes four to one. Oh, motion passes three to two. Hold on one second. Has everybody been able to register their vote? You got it? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Move on to action item 4A. Hold on one second. Yes, ma'am. Hold on. One, two, three, four. That is correct, correct. Yes. No. I got it out of order. I move that the governing board approve a professional travel for superintendent to attend the AASA National Conference on Education in San Antonio, Texas, February 16th through 18, 2023. So second. I have a motion and a second. Dr. Finch. Yeah, this is the annual uh, superintendent's conference uh, national and it's part of my, in my contract as part of a uh, PD. Okay, are there any questions or discussions? I'm just curious why we're bringing it by back, bringing it at this point so early. The agenda's not even out. We don't know if there's any actual benefit to this conference. You um, actually have to the, register now or you don't get um, access at the 
hotel that's present. You end up being down the street. So we're registering for something that could be 100% useless? No, I've been going 23 years in a row. I think it'll be, it's a go. It's, it's the, na we also present at it as well. So, yeah, I've been going for 23 years to the National Superintendents Conference. What are you presenting on? We're actually presenting on our uh, ability to uh, promote the district and uh, centered around really our Forbes recommendation, our Forbes award, that we're number one uh, public school in the nation for uh, best mid-size employer. And we're giving, uh, helping other districts learn how to promote themselves. Okay, any other questions or discussion? Ms. Paperman? So this is like a professional development where uh, superintendents throughout the country meet and they collaborate uh, to, to provide improvements within their districts. Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed, please say nay. Uh, nay. I don't see if there's a benefit uh, to us teaching other people to advertise. Okay, the motion passes four to one. Are we ready? Um, I would ask that the governing board approve professional development that is out of state. I second. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Excuse I me. would ask that the governing, oh, sorry. It just hadn't popped up. I would ask that the governing board accept the administrator's administration's recommendation to pre-approve the agenda as presented. I second. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed, please say nay. Um, due to it still having student activities funds, I will vote nay. Motion passes four to one. <clears throat> We're on D. Yes. yes. I would ask that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the job order contract with Skyline Builders and Restoration incorporated for the Performing Arts Building Lighting Retrofit at Deer Valley High School. I second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any questions or discussion? I just want to say thank you to Boulder Creek and their department for helping to come up with the plan and making it um, equitable for all of our other high schools to be able to have the same technology for their performing arts. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Mm. I'll abstain. So we have motion passes 401. Okay, I would ask that the gov ready? I would ask that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the job order contract with Skyline Builders and Restoration Incorporation for the Performing Arts Building Lighting Retrofit at Mountain Ridge High School. I second. We have a motion. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Any abstentions? I abstain. Motion passes four to zero to one. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I would ask that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the job order contract with Skyline Builders and Restoration Incorporation for the Performing Arts Building Lighting Retrofit for Sandra Day O'Connor High School. I second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Or any abstentions? I abstain. Motion, motion passes four to zero to four zero one. I would ask that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the job order contract with Skyline Builders and Restoration Incorporation for the Performing Arts Building Lighting Retrofit at Barry Goldwater High School. I second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
And any abstentions? Motion passes four zero one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, mine just popped up. Ready to go? I would ask that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the terms and conditions of the awarded. I can't say that. Okay, awarded school facilities board building renewal grant funding for the assessment of Desert Sage Greenbrier Vista Peak roof replacement and authorize the governing board's president to sign the school facilities terms and conditions document. I second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Maglarino. Uh, president O'Brien, members of the board, thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank you guys for doing each of those job order contracts for the lighting replacements. Um, uh, the way our board policy is written, if we would have combined them, it would have exceeded uh, the dollar threshold and the way the job order contract uh, is written, written, they had to be uh, specific to each school and each project uh, individually because they'll be done that way. Uh, so um, my appreciation for you uh, going through that maturation. But uh, uh, in regards to the school facilities board, uh, this is not something that you've seen a lot of um, in terms of the terms and conditions. Uh, it is required by the School Facilities Board whenever we have a SFB funded project. And uh, we have submitted the three roofs at uh, Desert Sage, Greenbrier, and Vista Peak uh, schools for replacement. Uh, what the uh, School Facilities Board has identified is that they are willing to fund the uh, assessment of the condition of those roofs to, to consider if they would be deemed to be replaced. Um, uh, for that funding, which is a little less than $6,000 per school, just to do the assessment again. Um, they uh, require that the terms and conditions be approved by the board and signed by the board president, uh, the superintendent, and either myself or the director of facilities. So uh, that's what's on this uh, agenda item uh, for your consideration tonight. I will just add that if they are deemed to be um, in a condition that warrants them being replaced, there will be an additional award from the School Facilities Board for the actual replacement. We do not believe that that will be sufficient to replace the roofs um, up to our standard. Uh, so we are uh, considering supplementing um, the SFB award uh, for the replacement of these roofs to be able to get to our standard, which is greater than the minimum standards that are adopted by the School Facilities Board. And I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, uh, regarding this matter. Mrs. Ordway? Okay. Anybody else? Mrs. Paperman? I can't. Okay. Okay. So my question is, uh, I know how it is important to make sure that we maintain our buildings uh, as an educator, as a teacher. I have seen districts. Uh, uh, one example is that uh, the ceiling came off and safety of students. So my question is, uh, what's the process to make sure that we're spending our money where it's supposed to be uh, to maintain those, uh, uh, the condition of the buildings? Uh, President O'Brien, Ms. Paperman, uh, so we have a, a replacement schedule, uh, a building renewal uh, schedule for all of our buildings. Um, and our facilities, uh, so a roof replacement, a, a air conditioning replacement, um, a, a paint schedule, a flooring uh, replacement schedule that we maintain. Um, these are scheduled to be replaced now per that schedule. And uh, due to the uh, cost and expense and the fact that the School Facilities Board has received some additional funding in the last legislati le legislative allocation, uh, we think that, uh, uh, and, and due to escalating costs uh, in construction, we think that having the SFB make an assessment to these roofs um, and, and using some of those dollars to help offset the escalating costs of construction um, is prudent at this time. So we do have a schedule uh, for maintaining our facilities up to our standards, and they are uh, due to be replaced per that schedule. Okay, so is it every few years that... Uh that it, so every few years, uh, the buildings are 
check to see if they are at standards uh, before investing uh, fundings into it? Uh, President O'Brien, Ms. Paperman, yes. So uh, annually, um, our Director of Facilities visits every um, one of our uh, facilities to be able to um, check the schedule. Uh, and then we, we do some ver verification. Each of those things that I mentioned are differing schedules. So, uh, for example, um, we weatherize or paint our buildings on a different schedule than we replace the flooring. Uh, so when it's due up on the schedule, he makes an assessment with the, with the school staff uh, themselves to determine whether or not, just because it's on the schedule, it may not be, um, uh, it may not be necessary for it to be done in that particular year, or it may have to be done uh, prematurely in some instances uh, due to unusual wear or something like that. So uh, annually, those assessments are made uh, at, at all of our facilities. Thank you. I, I do have one. Mrs. Ordway. Mrs. Ordway. <clears throat> uh, Jim, you know that facilities is my favorite topic. No. So, sorry about that. At, in the Friday update, if you don't know the answer at this moment in time, how, how does the school facility board come up with the, um, the replacement cost of a roof? What formula do they use? And you don't have to tell me that now because it might be a long answer. Um, President O'Brien, Ms. Hordway, the, the short version is it really depends on the roof, right? Uh, so, right. Um, what the existing roof is, uh, the pitch of the roof, uh, what was on the roof as the roofing um, um, uh, product uh, pre previously, uh, all of those will play a factor in determining what the actual value will. But they, they have kind of a, a, um, a square foot value that they use based on various conditions of the building to be able to determine what the replacement value will be. But they would... Um look at different uh, replacement value for the type of roof. So they would take that in consideration, not just the square footage of coverage. Uh, that is correct. Okay. And, and they basically, um, to maybe provide a you know, housing analogy, um, you can buy a roof uh, for your home and use maybe a lesser weight paper uh, on a tile uh, roof. Um, that won't last as long. That will be their minimum standard. Or you can upgrade that to multiple layers or even a higher weight paper, which will last a lot longer. Our standard would be for the higher weight paper um, in, in using that analogy. And so um, if they award it, they don't ding you if you make the roof last longer. So they wouldn't ding us to spend more money to make it last, to make the investment more sustainable. That, that is correct, um, but they would not provide any of that additional funding. Right, I just wanted to make sure that they wouldn't um, prevent us from making it the way we need to make it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Are you just one? to comment, Mrs. Fisher? Just one. Um, I'm very impressed that you managed to get money out of the School Facilities Board for anything. I'm just curious, did you hear a squeaking coming from downtown when you got the award? <laughs> I'm just curious. You haven't even filed the paperwork uh, yet. Cash. <laughs> well, um, President O'Brien, Ms. Fisher, we did not, um, but this is a little bit unusual for us, so. I'm glad you did. Um, and I know you'll make it better. Yes, sir, I'd like to say um, kudos to you as well, Mr. Miglarino. I've been on the board for seven and a half years, and I um, can tell you that this is the first time I've seen something from uh, the school facilities board come across our agenda. So to get them to pay for the assessment, um, yay. If we get extra, that will be, um, you know, the cherry on top of the uh, whipped cream and whipped ice cream, cream, I guess, and all of the other, and the roof. Um, and I do want to uh, thank you and our um, district, um, and most importantly, our community members who have um, continuously provided us with the bond money to keep our facilities um, in good shape. I mean, we've all heard the stories of fellow school districts who have not had those um, funds, and, and so they've had to shut down schools and or classrooms in the middle of a school year. We've always been proud to be 
um, a member of the Deer Valley community because we have supported um, our school district with the necessary funds to make sure our kids had clean, safe, and what I would consider, you know, good-looking classrooms and buildings to go to. So thank you, Mr. Miglorino, to you and your team. Um, with that, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, I believe that's a unanimous approval. Yes. I would ask that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the MOU Memorandum of Understandings between Deer Valley School District, Southwest Behavioral and Health Services for High School Wellness Counselors and General Behavioral and Health Services in student, to students and families within the district for the fiscal year 2022-2023. I second. So we have a motion and a second, and for this topic, we will go to Drs. Galligan and Dr. Mo Kusker. Uh, President O'Brien, members of the board, Dr. Finch, and guests. Dr. McCusker and I will uh, share some information, very short, um, with you about Southwest Behavioral and Health Services, the memorandum of understanding that you have before you that is specifically for the 2022-23 school year. We are pleased to highlight one of our strongest district community partnerships that directly impacts the wellness of our students. And we will go to the next slide. Hold tight. Over the past six years, we have been blessed to have many students who may not have had access to mental health services um, previously receive necessary care. And that has been very true over the traumatic past few years. DVUSD has a memorandum of understanding with Southwest Behavioral and Health Services for school-based programs at identified schools. Um, with that partnership, you can see that we have um, six full-time clinicians supporting 11 schools, and you can see what, which schools those are. And we have five full-time clinicians supporting the five high schools. The K-8 clinicians um, work either at one or two of our campuses, splitting their time each day. And the wellness counselors are each one um, is housed at each of our high schools. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. McCusker to share some of the benefits and some of the just the amazing support that our children receive. Thank you, Dr. Galligan. Good evening, Governing Board, uh, President O'Brien and Governing Board members, Dr. Finch and the community. Uh, our partnership with Southwest Behavioral Health and Services has been a very positive uh, relationship for our district families and students for the past five years. One of the benefits of Southwest Behavioral Health and Services is that it provides services not only to students, but also to their families. And so those wraparound supports are very instrumental in the care of the mental health and the mental well-being of our families and community. Here are some identified positive impacts that this partnership has brought forward. We have experienced a great benefit, as I said. It is a safe place for our students and our families to receive support that they may not have been able to seek on their own. Uh, this is a very seamless avenue. Uh, it can be referred directly. Uh, by a teacher, by a site administrator, by a nurse, anyone on the school site. Um, and some of these services that you see here have been instrumental in providing that support on many of our campuses. Uh, the unique needs of our families and our students have been met uh, on the campuses of our high schools, as well as our elementary and middle schools. And again, the impact that that has brought forward has really been beneficial. We have seen um, many of our students that have benefited from this program are attending school more often. Um, a de decreased student absenteeism is one of the many positive impacts. And as well, it's provided on the campus, so it is easy for students to access as well as their families. And Southwest actually goes into the homes as well for our working families, and that is a great benefit. And Dr. Galligan and I will take any questions. That concludes our presentation. Is this the right way? Well, I know that the benefits from this uh, partnership um, reach further than we can even know. Um, but one thing, uh, Melissa, 
students can self-report also. It does not have to be somebody. I mean, That's they correct. can self-report, and I know that um, a lot of them feel very comfortable being able to do that. President O'Brien, Vice President Ordway, yes, that is correct. Uh, some of our high school students, as a matter of fact, are our largest amount of self-reporters uh, because they're seeking out their own self-care. Um, and self-advocacy is, is a positive avenue as a result of this uh, mental health counseling. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Mrs. Fisher? Um, I, I did read through the agreements. Um, and it's not so much what I see there that I find concerning, because it, it, I know that we need supports for our students, and there's a lot of really good things that they can provide for us. But my concern is, is what level of control do the parents have in issues like this? Because I know that there are programs that are in Deer Valley District that are very concerning to parents that never came before the board, never... Um, um, and then they've been there for years, and they, they've I've, I've started receiving complaints in in um, 2019, the very beginning, um, from grandparents, from parents, from a student of some of the programs. So, to what level of control do our parents have um, in these types of programs and with this type of of uh, agreement? President O'Brien, uh, Board Member Fisher. In this aspect, there are multiple layers of control for our district parents. First and foremost, at any moment in time, uh, the parents have to initially uh, provide consent for any type of um, receiving of services. So that informed consent happens first. And then at any point, if a parent or a family member becomes uncomfortable, uh, they can certainly contact the clinician or they can contact myself or Dr. Galligan and they can do a revocation of services. So that is completely within the control of the parent. Um, and we meet uh, for a locus of control, for a very positive relationship. We meet with Southwest. I meet with Southwest uh, monthly uh, to get updates or any concerns from the field, as well as our campuses. Uh, so I feel we have a very transparent relationship with them, um, and we've seen a lot of benefit. Okay, the other, the other question I have is, um I know back in the day, and this is a long time ago, uh, 19, 20 years ago, um, it, people really didn't know about, as far as getting their children signed up with DVD, what they needed to do, um, whether or not they needed to apply for access, whether they, 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 whether they have insurance or not, whether they're wealthy or poor is irrelevant. Um, and they also didn't realize that they needed to as well deal with like the school, uh, the different things with um, benefits for special needs individuals, um, even before diagnosis at, at age three and on. Um, is that through this as well? President O'Brien, board member Fisher. Uh, yes, part of the services are really that full scope or continuum of care. Yes, this is behavioral health. Uh, but if a parent is in need of support or guidance, uh, let's say with the Department of Developmental Disabilities, they can either route that through their mental health clinician uh, because it is housed by Southwest Behavioral Health and Services. It is part of the regional health system, Ariba, um, and they are providers of those services and they have connections. They actually have people within their system that they can refer directly to. Uh, if there is an overload, let's say at HBHS, uh, we can directly refer to one of our uh, district social workers who can also help. And Student Support Services as well provides wraparound support meetings uh, where we invite all of the community members, including DDD, group home members, um, access members, whoever it may be, and we provide those wraparound support meetings to get things initiated. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Paperman. So this is this service uh, is it uh, free for everyone, or uh, health insurance is not required? President O'Brien, Ms. Paperman, um, it, mainly it is either free through access, or it is through parent insurance, and that's that's fairly clear. Um, whenever a student moves into support through Southwest Behavioral Health Services. 
Thank you. And I just want to restate that a child would not be seen until a parent has consented. President O'Brien, that is 100% correct. Informed consent must happen. Thank you so much. Great. Um, with that, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, <clears throat> the motion passes unanimously. All right, I would ask that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the 2022-2023 classified employees working as classified substitutes memorandum of understanding. I second. We have a motion and a second for this item. We'll be going to Mrs. Moffitt. President O'Brien, Governing Board members, we're pleased to bring you this MOU this evening. This is an agreement between um, the district and DeVespa or, and all classified employees if the board approves it this evening. The recommendation that you have in front of you, the content of the MOU is included in the executive summary, so the rationale including how it would be applied. Um, the reason we are bringing this to you um, is really because of our staffing shortage and the desire for our classified workforce to have the opportunity to step in to vacancies and to be paid um, as we um, paid a specific group last year. So to be specific, in our past practice, if one of our classified employees desired to help or cover, so let's use the example of a paraprofessional who might want to step in and support in the front office, they would receive the pay rate of that front office position that they were working in during that period of time. That could be at a higher rate, it could be at a lower rate. If it was at the lower rate, they would get the lower rate of pay. Um, that part is not specified in the classified manual. What is specified in the classified manual is that if a classified person is substituting in a higher range, then they have to work in that higher range for 20 consecutive days and at the 21st day, they would get the higher rate of pay. That's been in existence for a very long time. But because our classified workforce is really helping us in multiple ways, um, they may be able to help us a day or two here or there, we put this, memorandum, um, this MOU together. Um, last year, we did practice this in the area of facilities, and that really is because facilities is often seen as a more itinerant group. They can be deployed to support, for example, in the evening um, and uh, to uh, cover custodians at different locations, and they received their rate of pay. And we wanted that same opportunity for the other groups across our system. So what you see here, I'll point out um, the last two bullets that you see in your executive summary, is that a classified employee substituting in a classified vacancy will receive their current rate of pay when subbing in a classified position at their current range or at a lower range. So if, if a um, custodian is gonna be a custodian somewhere else, they'll receive that rate of pay. If they're gonna work in a lower range, then they will continue to receive the rate of pay that they receive as a custodian. If, however, they work in a position that is a higher range, then they will get that higher range of pay. The only difference that you, base rate of pay, by the way, the only difference you'll see there is that if we have an employee that has worked in our system for a very long time and they receive um, a higher rate of pay than the base rate at that higher range, then they're going to receive their rate of pay. And that's all specified in this MOU. Wonderful. I just want to confirm um, that if an employee works 40 hours in their normal job, their assigned job, but then they work 20 hours, they will also receive that pay at time and a half as required by federal law. President O'Brien, you are correct. They would receive overtime and the position that puts them in overtime is the rate of pay that they would receive for the overtime. Okay, wonderful. And I do thank you for making this change so that since they are working to help us out, it makes sense that we would pay them at the um, higher rate that is in their benefit. Are there any questions or discussion? I just wanted to. Mrs. Um, Ordway. Mr. Haria, did you want to say something since you're here? <laughs> All right. Well, just want to say hello then. Okay. I, I think it's great. I'm glad you guys worked at it because I think that um, people want to help. And uh, now they, now it makes it much more beneficial for them to, um, and it's 
clearer because I know that we're lacking a lot of uh, filled positions. So thank you very much for that work. All right, with that, I'll call for, oh, do you have a Mrs. Paperman? So I just want to clarify, since you mentioned that uh, in the past, they'll get a higher rate once they work 20 or 21 days, but that's no longer going to be put in place. They'll get a, a higher raise right away, I assume. Um, President O'Brien, Ms. Paperman, that is accurate. So if okay. the board approves this MOU, this MOU will override that language in the classified manual for this fiscal year. Um, you may very well see through the NST process um, that when we come back around in May, June, that we recommend this become permanent language. That's very possible, but an MOU allows us to practice this for um, this year. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will call the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. I would ask that the governing board approve the administration's recommendations for the listed employees reclassifications for the 2022-2023 fiscal year. I second. We have a motion and a second, and we will go to Mrs. Moffat. President O'Brien, governing board members, we bring this list to you as our annual um, reclassification process. I want to note that uh, there are eight different recommendations that are on this list. Three of those, um, I provided in the update if you the opportunity to look at that, is part of the apprentice program. And those three um, will actually, if should the board approve this this evening, will have different implementation dates based on their um, apprentice cycle, but the remaining um, recommendations would be effective beginning of this fiscal year should the board approve it. Any questions or discussion? No. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say nay. I want to explain my nay. Um, I know when we build our own, that's great, but we have yet to ever really see how this works, other than certain individuals get an extra raise at the end of every year. Um, and I just think it's uh, just really unfair to a lot of our employees who work very hard. They all deserve a good raise. Um, some, of our, some of our school secretaries, they do the work of a business manager for that campus, and yet they're just a secretary. And they don't stand a chance, no matter how much they develop, of getting bumped up just based on development. So I just find it concerning and out of fairness, um, I think there should be open positions that people apply for. Thanks. So a uh, motion passed four to one. So we'll move on to um, preview items. 5A is going to be um, brought back at the future meeting because some uh, information was uh, brought to our head nurse today, so we didn't have time to make those adjustments for the meeting. So we'll move on to preview item B, Mrs. Moffat. Do you have it, Garrett? No. Okay, so we, we are going to not review JLCB, and instead we're going to be reviewing this evening GCB, GDB, GCH, and JFB, all of which are recommendations um, that we're making to you and that all due to legislative changes that have recently been made. So first is policy GCB, professional staff contracts and compensation. So this is um, specifically driven out of statute that each school district must provide a total compensation statement to all of its employees. And that total compensation statement should be reflective of um, benefits, of leave, of addenda, of base contract, everything that the employee earned that year, we should be re representing it in one statement. And so you'll see that that's now included in this specific policy. Identical language is now um, suggested for GDB, for support staff contracts and compensation. You'll see that it's all red and all underlined, and the reason that is is because 
Deer Valley has never had a GDB before. So we're recommending that we adopt a GDB for our support staff and that it also reflect the same statute in that policy. And then we're also recommending policy GCH for support staff orientation and training. And what this is specifically saying is that we cannot um, uh, implement any type of training or onboarding with our staff annually or when hiring them that um, would promote what you see listed here. So any blame or judgment on the basis of race, ethnicity, or sex um, as defined by the statute, by the seven concepts, and those are listed in this statute. And just as a side note, we don't do that currently. We didn't do it previously, but now it's, it is listed in statute, and so it is now listed in our policy. And then JFB, there were some substantial changes that were made to open enrollment um, uh, statute, and so now are included in JFB. So I am going to go through a few of these with you this evening um, and let you know where we are in the process of implementing them. So first on uh, JFB, you'll see the third paragraph down underlined, the school district shall update an, on each school's website the school's capacity and whether the school is currently accepting open enrollment students by grade level at least once every 12 weeks. Well, we do, um, you're probably aware that we have a main website that lists every single school and whether or not they have capacity for open enrollment, if they have limited capacity or no capacity. What we don't currently do is list each school's grade level, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, and so on. And we also don't list by program. So we do have a meeting scheduled um, with all relevant departments to design what that will look like and who will monitor that so that our website is current. Um, and because we are actively looking at open enrollment on a daily basis, it will be very likely that we will be updating that more often than a 12-week cycle. And then the next um, line you'll see if a school has any other separate, oh, I mentioned that, specialized program, so we would list specialized program. A few other things that were interesting and noted in the new law is that if a, a school district undergoes a um, boundary change, that a student that exists at a school that wants to open enroll and stay at that school and through a boundary change is supposed to go to a different school, now here it says that that child can stay at the previous school. Um, another thing that we want to make sure that you, um, we draw your attention to is that um, our current policy outlines that we can deny a student access for open enrollment based on a suspension. That legislatively is no longer allowable, and so we have um, struck that from our policy. It is now saying, again, been expelled and we're taking out suspension because expulsion is still allowable. And those are the most significant changes um, that I see in this, this specific language. But we did, I did review it also just so the board is aware with Denise Little Britt and looked at our current practices. Um, the practice that we needed to quickly revise is the updating of our website. Oh, and, the, and the not allowing for the suspension. So that also has been revised. Thank you so much. Any questions for Mrs. Reed? Um, when you're meeting with the team to go over the um, build out of the open enrollment um, program on the website, um, I'd like to just make a recommendation that it's easier to find the open enrollment website on all of our school websites. There's, a, I had to just right now, just looking, it's not on the home page anywhere. You have to go to quick links and, and drop down. Um, but on our school home pages, we have so many, you know, buttons. It would be nice that there was just a button for open enrollment. Um, yeah, I think that would be a little bit more helpful to, to parents that are looking at um, where they'd like to take their kids to school. Thanks. So, Ms. Reed, for clarification, are you speaking to the district website? Or did you say that it's easier on a school website than it is the district website? It's it's just not it's not prominent anywhere. Okay. Um, so I didn't see it on the district page, the the front landing page, and I may have overlooked it. But I'm on Anthem's um, school website right now, and I know that our school websites are 
you know, they're they're all very similar in the in the way that they're um, laid out. I just picked Anthem because it was the first one, not picking on Anthem School at all. Um, but open enrollment isn't on here, listed on the front page anywhere. Um, you have to go to um, kind of scroll down to the bottom where it says school information, and then there's quick a quick links tab that you click on, and then there's the open enrollment information. But it would just be nice if there was information where you could easily see when you're on the school's um, front website page. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Thank you so much, Mrs. Moffat. Do appreciate that. Our last preview item is um, the proposed Arizona School Board Association 2023 political agenda. Um, it has been attached to um, that agenda item for a review by board members so that at the um, 2nd August meeting, we can discuss and um, provide direction to our um, liaison, uh, Mrs. Reed, prior to the delegate assembly at the beginning of September. Are there are any questions or discussion at this time? Okay. Seeing none, Mrs. Paperman, for board report. Board reports. I would like to uh, address, uh, I had a lot of community members, a lot of uh, staff uh, that were constantly uh, messaging, contacting over a standard-based mindset. Uh, as a school board, uh, it has been disappointed uh, because I know that the few meetings that we were here, we were for supporting our students, our community, our staff to build relationship. Uh, I feel that of the outcome that we have right now within the district as a school board, the decisions that I thought that I voted for, that this was going to be traditional grading, that is not going to confuse our students, our parents, and our teachers, uh, it seems to be that we're back on square one to standard-based grading. So when I looked at the examples, to me, it was confusing. So I feel like if I'm confused, looking what was updated, everyone else is confused. Uh, the teachers are not happy, the parents are not happy. So uh, it's just very disappointed that uh, I feel that we should have heard the parents' voice, uh, the teacher's voice. Uh, we had a student that came up here that spoke up also how this ha has affected him and many other students. Uh, so I just hope that in the future, we need to put our community first. We need to listen to our staff. We need to retain our teachers. We need to retain our students. We need to start building those relationships and doing something. I feel like something was done against my will because I did not vote for standard-based grading. I, I voted was for traditional grading for the reason is that there were many people that did not understand what grading is within Deer Valley District. And even until now, I have a lot of teachers saying the same thing. I don't understand this grading system. I don't know how to explain it to the students. I don't know how to explain it to the parents. I don't know if I'm the only board member here that feels confused what happened. I thought that we were going to vote for something that everyone was going to understand. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Paperman. Mrs. Fisher? Um, I'm going to start by welcoming everyone to the school year. Um, I've seen wonderful pictures of our kiddos, you know, those nerdy little first day pictures um, standing out front. It was a little bit ironic because I found one of my son standing in front of a bus that Bill the bus driver used to drive. 
and the top of his head barely came just above the first step. I just thought it was the cutest thing ever. And that's what all these little kids were by me of, especially I love the ones that have no teeth um, and are smiling as big as can be. Um, so I, I want to welcome them. Um, and, I, and I am so pleased for the parents that are happy. And, but I am concerned. Um, I, have, I have been extremely busy with work things, but, um, and with being out of town, every time a parent has sent me um, something or they, several have sent me the same thing, I've kind of consolidated some of it and I've sent it through um, to, to Sheila um, or to other individuals with the district um, so that those concerns aren't unheard. And I was very disappointed in the Friday update that painted that, well, we don't know where these problems are because nothing is wrong in the district. It's perfect. It's perfect. There are no problems. And I'm sorry, but there's a big rug and there's a lot of problems that are under it. Marketing is great. False advertising is horrible. Um, and I think that's what we're doing right now. Um, I have had parents um, at their wits end um, that nothing happened with standards-based grading other than we changed a symbol. Um, as I've contacted in, I've tried to ask that parents, that community, that, that they give grace. It takes a lot of work to, to move, a, a, to change the direction of a moving ship. Anybody who's ever been on a boat knows that to be true. You can turn the wheel all you want, but you're either going to capsize or but you're not going to turn fast. And so, so I have asked community members to give some grace, to contact, stay in contact with the district, give some grace with what's happening, um, and then some parents did post uh, Dr. Miller's training that, that was a video he had done. And lo and behold, I sat there and I watched it, and all I could think was, hmm, okay. We changed absolutely nothing. We're doing standards-based grading district-wide. They're doing what they want, regardless of what the board said, regardless of what parents said. Um, and they just put some lipstick on a pig and said, hey, this is a duck. Um, and, and I was, I was really, I, I didn't even know what to say. Um, I don't know what to say today, honestly. I'm going to go back, rewatch that last board meeting. It was what I would ca uh, consider the board meeting from hell because it went so late. Um, it should have been a study session, and, and maybe we should still have a study session. I would ask that we consider having a study session. Um, and if not now, maybe in January. I don't know. But our parents, our teachers, I, I, it's not just the grading. That's what we discussed in that one. But at this point, you know, from our parents, they're, they're worried about their kids. They're worried about the grades. They're worried about their children's motivation. They're worried about their children's trust. Can they trust the adults of Deer Valley anymore? The parents are asking, can we trust Deer Valley? Um, and that, to me, is heartbreaking to get those. But I get the same from teachers. I have been contacted by a lot of teachers. Um, and and uh, they all start with, shouldn't we be respected for our knowledge base? Should not we be respected for the education we have? Shouldn't we be respected that it is our job, our duty, to teach and train these children and at the end of every single conversation is, thank you for the, an, an, I can't say the word, an anonymity of getting up there and knowing you're probably going to get it for it. Because if our name comes out, we will get it for it. This has been the most heartbreaking start of a school year. When I hear the voices of the parents and the teachers I don't know what to say. I don't know what can be done. I don't know whether it's just a study session to maybe discuss student-based learning or standards-based 
standards-based learning, standards-based grading, standards-based, it's not just a symbol. It matters. It all matters. And uh, best I can say is I will go back and re-listen. Maybe I was so tired I just missed something. So I'll do it on a Saturday when I'm awake. Um, but I think we need to consider a study session. I really do. Um, and I, I do believe more adjustments are going to be made. They, they need to be made. And uh, I just ask that everybody makes it student first and all the rest of us later. Because it's the kids are getting lost in all this. So that's it. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher and Mrs. Reed. <clears throat> I'd just like to start with welcoming everybody back um, to uh, the new school year um, and just a quick shout out to our facilities department with all of the storms that we've had over the last couple of weeks. Um, they were working um, quite a bit of overtime and around the clock to repair damage to buildings and um, to um, repair damage to buildings that weren't even totally done yet um, to make sure that our kids were able to start school on time, and I know that they're still working on um, replanting and finishing up. Um, so thank you to all of you who um, are dedicated to keeping our kids safe um, while they're at school and um, making sure that our, our buildings and our um, grounds look really nice um, for our community. Um, I'm going to keep it really short and sweet this evening. Um, I'm thankful that we... Um, are able to start the year off in what we would consider normal conditions. And I um, um, hope and pray that we're able to continue that. Um, I know that everybody's excited to um, hopefully have a, a normal school year this year. I know that, that I am excited to have a normal school year. Um, it was a big, a big day with having a brand new high schooler and I'm thankful that, um, that, our high schools are able to um, participate and, and do everything with our, our kids that our past um, uh, seniors and upperclassmen have missed out on. So yay for that. And um, I think they've covered standard-based grading, and I think y'all cover standard-based grading. Um, but what I'd like to do is make sure that we have something on our books for a couple of weeks so we can have a check-in on standard-based grading and what is going on and um, how we are progressing. Um, it would be great to be able to hear from teachers and parents and students firsthand. Um, and I know that there is a lot of, um, I don't want to speak out because I don't want to get targeted or I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job. Um, but it's really important that we hear from from um, teachers and staff members and administrators that are um, working with standards-based grading and um, the successes that they're having, because we have gotten some emails where, where there, there have been successes, but also the frustrations or the pitfalls. We can sit up here all we want and, and make decisions, but we're not boots on the ground that um, living it every day with, um, with our students and with our kids. So that's really important. And then if for some reason you do speak out and you come and you talk to the board um, at a board meeting or you come to a study session um, and you are targeted, then you talk to Mrs. Moffitt and we would take care of it really quickly um, because that isn't tolerated in our district. Um, but it's really important that people that people talk and use their voice for um, not only for yourselves and your job, um, but also for your students. Um, so I would just encourage you to um, to do that and know that if you do if you do have concerns about something, um, that your job is protected um, with our HR policies. And um, I know that DVEA is is there to be able to um, to help with with those issues and make sure that teachers are safe and protected. So that's it. Thank you. Mrs. Ordway. Well, for all the returning staff, new staff, students, parents, um, welcome. New community partners are already lining up to make sure our students and our staff have 
more than what they need in some cases and exactly what they need in others. Um, I wanted to uh, just put this out there, who's ever in charge of it, Gary, um, to make sure that our new principals or principals to different school or that are new to different schools know that we have um, extra supplies for students that don't have the supplies, such as backpacks and, and all that stuff we have. We have that. Um, also, um, I know that uh, there have been, every year there's uh, some kind of conversation or a complaint or a wish want to be a bus rider. Um, and, you know, you're 92 steps out of that. Um, and I get, I get all that. But I also understand now that we have um, middle schoolers um, that go to tradition or a pure middle school that perhaps we need to look at um, look at individual cases and or look at at our policy because we do have our two middle uh, dedicated middle schools um, Deer Valley Middle School Desert Sky Middle School that have major um, major roads that are within what what we have talked about, our one point, Jim, is it 1.5? 1.5. Um, to see if, if perhaps we should take a look at it. And I know that we are um, short on bus drivers, but um, I think that with the amount of traffic in some places that have increased, and I don't know when the last time um, our city of Phoenix and or uh, Glendale did the safe safe um, school, safe school walking paths when the last time that was done. I just want to look, I want to look at that again because I, I, I think that times have changed. We have more homeless people that are on these routes, the walking routes for kids. So whatever we can do to look at that, that would be awesome. Um, I look forward to the rollout of the communication plan that we talked about to keep our parents um, involved and updated on standard-based mindset as uh, along with um, the grading that goes with it at whichever campus they're at. And I think it's important to remember it's the mindset that we're, that we should be concentrating on because that's the part where the learning takes place for our kids. Um, our classified, certified, exempt, non-exempt, and administrators have all been pulling double, triple, quadruple duty, and I do appreciate that, even though we're in, you know, the first week, full week of school. So um, for those teachers that are running on six-fifths contract, um, which I think we have a couple of high schools that maybe the majority of their teachers are, um, I hope that they take advantage of the wellness centers that we have set up because that will give them a little bit of reprieve. So. That's my report. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to keep mine short and sweet because I got laryngitis at the end of last week. Um, but I am going to say huge welcome back to all the staff and students and um, families. It was great to see lots of um, cute pictures and read stories. And um, I even got a cute first day of uh, school picture, too, from my teacher. So, um, but the one thing I am going to um, talk briefly about is that um, that while I thought that I understood clearly what we voted on as a board for standard-based grading, um, that is not uh, what I think happened and the reactions I'm getting from teachers and parents from our pre-service days to kids going back to school and being talked about it in class and I have not had the time to go back and listen to um, the three meetings including the most recent very long one to ensure that um, it just isn't something I misunderstood or we miscommunicated because I do know that that occurs um, but 
I do agree with my fellow board members. We, um, I'd like to hear an, uh, an update in September. And uh, Mrs. Reed is correct. We need to hear um, from personal experiences. And I, I, I want to hear the good. Um, I want to hear if something's not working. I, but, you know, I, I um, um, was completely overwhelmed and frustrated last week when I started hearing from teachers and parents again about what they believed we approved, what I believed we approved, and what was being implemented. I even had one um, parent reach out and talk about how she went back and listened to all of the meetings related to standard-based grading the last three, all of those hours. And she didn't think that what got implemented is what we agreed on. So um, I know that we're all trying to do what's best for kids. Standard-based mindset is very important. Um, where we ended up on standard-based grading, uh, we need to revisit. I know that there was frustration um, on some folks on parts because uh, we'd moved forward even though the board said we were going to have a vote and then work had to be redone. Um, so we can't get this, we need to get all, all on the same page. And I know that one of the comments, um, and I don't remember if it was the very last meeting or the prior meeting, is that you start planning when you're a principal in October for the next year. So that means that by October, we need to figure out what's going to happen in the 22, uh, 23-24 school year. Um, but when you have parents that are talking about taking their kids and going to other school districts for high school that have been, you know, traditional public school in the school, you know, go to my school in my neighborhood, that's concerning to me. We cannot not listen to that. And we have to acknowledge it. I want to hear if things are going well, we need to hear that. But we also need people to understand what is actually going to happen um, in the classroom and uh, make sure that we're being consistent, uh, as we talked about before. So um, we will oh, go to the superintendent. I apologize. <laughs> I am a little. Um, so now we will hear from the superintendent for his report. Thank you. We I've had a chance to visit most of the schools and programs. I know my team has as well. I think I've hit about four, 36 of the schools so far, visited with hundreds of teachers. And again, um, I will echo, as I did in the Friday update, that we've had a great start to the school year. Um, positive uh, vibes out there. I think having the COVID in the rear view mirror has helped a ton. Now we've fi finally started a normal school year. My, a lot of my principals are echoing that. that that's a, been a plus. Uh, Mr. Miguelino and I continue to meet with the state land developers um, and the de developers that are um, doing infills and big projects. Um, again, they continue to um, knock on our door and tell us more is coming. So um, that's exciting for our neighborhood. Uh, I know it was in the Republic. I think I shared with you the, the progress made on TSMC. It's just great to see them uh, become a, a bigger player in our neighborhood. It'll be a couple of years probably before we see the main hyper growth uh, that's coming. So it's exciting to see that. We have uh, kids are starting to show up, uh, but not, uh, there appears to be some supply chain issues Etc. So there seem to be uh, dribbling in versus coming in uh, large waves. But we s expect here in the next couple months they will um, start accelerating as their projects get closer to uh, completion, especially the programs or the companies that feed them. Uh, all of our high schools are, are up in enrollment, but we are going to probably a uh, overall flattening of our system until we see the hyper growth take off. We'll see what what that turns out to be. Uh, don't know too much uh, yet. And about day 10, we'll know what the numbers are for our school year. Some of the uh, projects that we've done this summer, just having an update for everyone, 
we did open uh, Inspiration Mountain, and I think you mentioned the weather has been not been our friend. Uh, we've had a lot of flooding and trees snapping off and mini tornadoes through our yards, uh, lots of uh, cleanup for our crews. We did have lose a roof, one part of a roof up here. Um, but we're about 65% uh, complete on our five high schools, on our library, uh, our media center updates. That's been um, a challenge as well. Uh, Mr. Miguel keeps uh, asking them where his part, the parts are, and they continue to promise and not deliver. But we're about 65% complete, and that's about what we predicted with the um, with the high schools. They've been great working with us. We. We've started, if you've been following me on Twitter and Instagram, we started at Union Park and Sonoran Foothills putting those two additions up. And of course, the the water tends to turn them into swimming pools, which slows us down. But uh, it's they, we've now done some blocking and uh, some of the utilities and stuff are in. So it's looking good. We hope to have them completed uh, probably December 2022. Um, we've re relocated four classrooms. Uh, from Gavlin Peak to Terramar, and then the two classrooms uh, to Sierra Verde. The classrooms at Terramar are a go, they're done, uh, and the classrooms at Sierra Verde, we're still working on those. Uh, be a little bit while longer before we get those in and rolling, but Terramar was the biggest concern we had. We've also worked on the LED uh, field lighting through the summer. Um, again, dodging all of the soggy ground, that's made it challenging for us as well. But at the uh, high schools, we are now getting our fields lit with LED lighting. It's kind of nice. Um, and we're re re uh, retrofitting two more. So um, we're having lots of uh, new updates and lights. And you, as you approve the auditoriums this, uh, tonight, we'll be working on those throughout the school year. Some other things that went on this summer, we had some concrete improvements at 19 of our campuses, anytime there's a crack, settling, uh, et cetera, we, um, if they need to be updated, we do that. 19 of our campuses got concrete improvements, paving, resurfacing, at, and striping at 20 campuses this summer. We interior painted five buildings, five campuses, and did exterior on six campuses, and we did four projects on 14 campuses, and HVAC on two so to Ms. Paperman's point, um, we have a schedule and have uh, tra take great pride on keeping our facilities top shelf. And I would argue we have some of the best facilities in all of Arizona. So that's the latest upon on that. I want to give you a little bit update, a political update. Um, the, the aggregate expenditure limit is, was part of the fixing of it was part of the deal for uh, this budget, this latest budget. And uh, the handshake was that if the judge ruled that they would take care of it in this session, well, the judge did rule, but um, the governor has not activated his side of the bargain. So we're working on that. But if that does not get fixed this next school year, that is a $64 million hole for Deer Valley. So that is not a small hole. That's a big hole. And so um, that is making me nervous, and it should make you nervous as well. It is very likely that that uh, either doesn't get fixed or uh, comes with a poison pill. And as it was uh, worked on this year, that uh, that way as well. So, sixty-four million dollar cut to Deer Valley would not be good. Would not be good. So we're keeping an eyeball on that, meeting with our lobbyists and our legislators to get that hopefully done before the end of the this legislative session, which is approaching fast. Fall sports have started, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, it'd be nice to, uh, as the temperature goes down, we'll uh, be able to enjoy our uh, sports season. So that's the latest. Thank you. Thank you. I have one um, small request. Can we please get uh, school year 24 and school year 25 that were approved um, posted to the district website so that they're available to our um, community members? Perfect. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 8 20 p.m. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. please say aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously.